this is Donna Faye Weitzinger, Navajo County Supervisor from District 5, and we are coming to you for Navajo County Connections, and today I have Jason Moore with me, and he's going to talk to us about redistricting, um, why redistricting is important, and what the public should know. So, we'll yeah. first start with Jason and maybe introducing yourself. Well, first off, my name's Jason Moore. I'm a Deputy County Attorney uh, at the County Attorney's Office. Um, I'm a civil deputy, which means I don't really do criminal prosecution work. Um, I represent our uh, county elected officials and department heads and uh, part of my job um, is uh, uh, redistricting uh, during this cycle. Um, and uh, I guess one of the things that I want the public to know right off the bat is that uh, we're doing uh, a series of redistricting community meetings all throughout Navajo, Navajo County uh, from the far north in Cayenta to the far south in uh, White River. Uh, we're traveling around the county right now um, doing redistricting meetings. We're doing our first set of meetings. Now we're going to be doing a second set of meetings. And we really want to encourage the public to get out there and participate uh, with us in those things. Thank you. And I think maybe even starting at the very, like, I'm thinking of a new voter, um, mm -hmm. someone who just turned 18. Yeah. What is redistricting? Sure. Or Redist district. Sure. Basically, the, 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 the Constitution says, uh, has a principle in it called one person and one vote. And, what it, and really what that comes down to is you don't want, like say you had a county with 100 people in it. You wouldn't want 90 people in one district and 10 people uh, in the other four districts because uh, you know, we're a five district county. Uh, if you did that, um, the people who were uh, separated into uh, the four counties with only 10 people, they would be massively overrepresented, over and the 90 people in the one district would be massively underrepresented. And so what we, we try to do is try to keep it equal. And uh, in Arizona, that means our supervisorial districts have to be within 10% uh, of population with, with one, one another. Uh, and that's the maximum deviation that we can have between our largest and our smallest uh, district here in Navajo County. And that is a firm and uh, unmovable uh, mm -hmm. uh, fact that uh, is, in, is written into our law. Uh, the other thing uh, that I will, I will tell you that is firm and immovable um, is our uh, supervisorial districts also have to be compliant with the Voting Rights Act. Um, we're subject to Section 2 of the Voting Rights Act, as is the rest of the country. Um, and what that basically means is we can't draw our districts um, in a way uh, that has the uh, either the purpose or the intent or the effect of uh, reducing uh, the uh, input of minorities. Mm -hmm. And uh, here in Navajo County, you know, it's a very special situation. We're about three, 53, 54% uh, uh, minority population in our mm -hmm. county. Uh, three of our supervisorial districts are uh, minority majority districts, meaning mm -hmm. uh, that uh, the majority of populations in districts one, two, and five um, uh, are minority. Um, and that doesn't just include uh, Native American population. Most folks know that we encompass the Navajo uh, population, uh, the Hopi, and uh, the White uh, Mountain Apache, uh, but it also includes other racial and ethnic minorities as well. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that's basically what we're trying to do is redistribute our population and make sure that our districts are as equal as possible. So why do we redistrict now at this time? Sure. Uh, we had, we went every 10 years, as you know, uh, we have a United States census. And uh, this time uh, the census came back, uh, indicated that Navajo County is actually lost population, according to the Census Bureau, between 2020 uh, and, and, and 2010. Mm -hmm. Um, that surprised a lot of us. Um, it doesn't necessarily square with what a lot of people see on the ground uh, in terms of, you know, new construction, new businesses, uh, things of that nature. So mm -hmm. a lot of people were really surprised at that, but there were a lot of things going on um, during uh, 2020, as a lot of people remember, uh, with mm -hmm. something called COVID, um, uh, things like that. And so uh, many of us have had the unfortunate experience of having to uh, experience that ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, that probably had some impact on uh, the ability of the Census Bureau to get out and take uh, a good census, go door to door like they normally would and, and, and count folks. And so I think, uh, you know, Navajo County, like uh, a lot of rural counties in Arizona, feels like we got undercounted. Um, but there's not a lot we can do about that. Yeah. Um, what I can tell you is that uh, according to the census, we're about a thousand people uh, fewer in population uh, tw in 2020 than we were in 2010. Mm. And uh, what that really means in terms of our total 
deviation uh, right now between our largest supervisorial district and our smallest um, is that we have about a 15% difference uh, and the law only allows 10%. And so what that means is we've got to reduce that number, get it under 10%, and really we want to try to shoot for as close to 5% as possible. Um, and so that means that we have to uh, change our supervisorial district boundaries uh, to equalize populations, and um, it's just a normal thing that happens every 10 years, so, uh, that, but that's why. So do you, um, in looking at the numbers, is <laughs> that specific across each district from District 1 to District 5, or are there uh, districts that stand out that need to, I guess, change and make it closer to that 5%? Yeah, well, you know, one thing, one, one constant theme that has been going on Navajo, in Navajo County for, you know, at least the last 30 years, and, and I've been here for the last 20, um, is that uh, the growth pattern in the in the county is uneven. Um, generally speaking, uh, most of the growth in Navajo County has occurred in what is today District 4 and District 5. Um, and uh, generally speaking, uh, uh, districts uh, 1 and 2 in the northern part of the county, which include most of uh, uh, Hopi and Navajo, um, uh, haven't grown that much. Mm -hmm. And so what that means is that uh, districts 1 and 2, in order to take in more population, have had to gradually keep moving southward in order to gather up more population. And uh, that's a trend that uh, I expect that to continue to see um, here uh, in this redistricting cycle as well. Um, and uh, so our 2020 uh, census was kind of similar to that. It showed a population loss. Uh, the most significant loss was uh, in District 1. Uh, so, you know, this is uh, consistent with the overall pattern that we've seen for the last 30 years. Um, and what that does is it makes, uh, um, you know, one of our redistricting goals that you and the rest of the Board of Supervisors set, uh, Ms. White Singer, was uh, making sure that, um, you know, we try to draw our districts in a compact way. Mm -hmm. Well, that's hard. Uh, as when, 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 you, when, when you have two districts that are really large in geography anyway, yeah. and you're gonna have to grow them further, um, you know, it makes it hard to create compact districts. And for, mm -hmm. you know, supervisors, uh, you know, in District 1 and District 2, it means that they have to represent uh, a massive geographic area. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas, you know, say our District 4, which is geographically the smallest, uh, has to do the least travel to represent you know, all of, all of uh, that supervisor's constituents. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, it's, th that's, that's the overall trend in what we're seeing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think, so if a person is um, paying attention to the redistricting conversation, mm -hmm. why is it important that they pay attention? Well, I think it's important because um, I think the average citizen uh, wants to uh, feel represented. And uh, one of the things that our Board of Supervisors recognized when it uh, adopted our redistricting advisory committee and created our redistricting uh, priorities, mm -hmm. one of those things was recognizing communities of interest. And the thing about a community of interest, it can be very large, um, say the, the Navajo Nation, mm -hmm. uh, the Hopi, or the White Mountain Apache. Uh, you know, those are all uh, huge communities of interest, mm -hmm. but communities of interest can, are also middle-sized. Um, you could look at a community, uh, say, uh, Heber Overgard, uh, for example, or you could look at uh, the Chin Lee area, or, or, or not Chin Lee, you could look at the Kayenta area. Um, you could, so that, that might be a medium-sized uh, mm -hmm. area of interest. Maybe Snowflake and Taylor, you know, even though they're separate municipalities, they probably yeah. kind of identify with one another. Mm -hmm. Um, and so one of our priorities in redistricting is to try to avoid splitting those communities of interest. Um, and I think if you're a member of the public, uh, you know, what might interest you um, in the redistricting process is making sure that your community of interest um, is being represented at the redistricting advisory committee meetings, uh, being represented in our community meetings, and that uh, that uh, uh, community of interest gets to be represented by the same supervisor, if at all possible. Um, there are times and situations where uh, it might not be possible to uh, uh, draw a map in a way that won't divide a community of interest in some way. For example, uh, our current redistricting map between district supervisors uh, one and two. Mm -hmm. um, it has to cut through part of uh, Hopi land 
in order to go d so that District 1 can go down and pick up uh, uh, some non-native population uh, in the southern part of the county. And so in some ways uh, we have uh, divided that community of interest a little bit, but we've tried to do it in a way that is uh, as unimpactful as possible on the Hopi po population that we're separating there. So that's that's really the big thing I think. And then I think if you're uh, represent, and then I think if you're uh, you know a, a minority uh, pop, part part of a minority population, uh, I think it uh, is in your best interest to make sure that um, uh, minority uh, group that, that that you identify with um, is is well represented too. And so I think those are a couple of good reasons to be involved. I think when we think about our responsibility as citizens, not only to the nation as a whole, but to our local region, is participating in the voting process. Yeah. And so when we participate and cast our ballot, we are making it a decision that we want this particular person to represent us. And it might not be just the person. This mm -hmm. person is... Um, for, for instance, my position, this person lives in Pine Top Lakeside, mm -hmm. they know um, the needs of our community and so forth. And so making sure that the people that you want representing you have the ability to do so. So that's part of the process of redistricting and certainly protecting um, our ability to make uh, those decisions on yeah. representation. Mm -hmm. As we always say, representation matters. And so it does. Um, when we look at local um, mm -hmm. voting from our townships to our county to state and federal, we're always making sure, or we hope to, when we cast our ballots, that um, we're making the best decision to be able to um, support um, our community and our schools and our roadways and all of That's those right. things that impact That's us right. every day. That's right. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's funny that you brought up participation because uh, we have a really cool tool uh, available to this, all of the citizens in our county that enables them uh, to uh, draw their own suggested redistricting maps for our redistricting advisory committee and ultimately our board of supervisors to consider. And one of the really awesome features uh, of this is that uh, it allows, it puts basically the tools of a GIS expert into uh, the hands of the ordinary citizen. And they can do it down to the census block level the same way a, a true GIS person was. And all they really have to do if they wanna access that is they go to the county, uh, general county website. There is a redistricting link on that, on that web page, mm -hmm. and uh, they can submit maps to the county of how they would like to see our Board of Supervisors and our RAC uh, uh, divide the county. And so that's a really cool feature, and we've got uh, uh, another segment coming up here where uh, Ryan Taylor, uh, who is our kind of our chief uh, GIS guy in the county, mm -hmm. uh, is gonna give uh, the public some directions about uh, how to use that tool and uh, how to submit maps to the county and the board for, for, for their consideration. Great, well thank you. <laughs> Jason, we're happy that you're able to join us today and talk to us about what redistricting is. And we certainly appreciate Ryan doing that work for us to help us to map and to be able to um, help the community better understand what that looks like. So um, please watch the next segment. Um, we certainly hope that we'll get more responses. We'd like to see that um, we have a large response from our community who's participating in redistricting. Again, your participation is so important um, to be able to make sure that um, you are getting the representation that you um, feel is important for your community. So we ask that you um, participate in redistricting. So thank you for joining us today. Thank yes. you, Jason. Right. Thank and you. we look forward to seeing you in the future. All right. Thank you very much. Shown here is a simple map of the five Navajo County supervisorial districts. According to the U.S. Census between 2010 and 2020, districts one and two shown in green decreased in population. Districts 3, 4, and 5, shown in pink, increased in population. The U.S. Census divides the nation into tabulation areas of decreasing size. Each of these areas are assigned a population count. It is given that the nation is divided into states, which are then divided into counties. Counties are then divided into tracts. Tracts are divided into block groups. Block groups are divided into blocks. These blocks are combined into supervisorial districts. There are 20,804 blocks within Navajo County. 
DRA is an online mapping tool that allows you to create your own supervisor districts using census blocks. DRA stands for Dave's Redistricting Application. This tool is accessible from the Navajo County homepage shown here. On the Navajo County homepage, click on the redistricting link in the lower right hand corner. Shown here is a portion of the redistricting page and instructions for using the DRA tool. After reading through these instructions, click this link to open up the tool. Shown here is the DRA welcome page. It invites you to subscribe to subsequent updates. We recommend dismissing this window. If this is your first time on the site, click on the sign up option in the top right to create a user ID and choose a password. If you already have a user ID and password, click log in. To get started after you log in, click on the button with the three lines in the top left corner. Then click on the maps option. To find the map for Navajo County, click on the down arrow next to my maps. Select published maps. Enter Navajo County in the search box to find the map of the existing districts to use as a starting point. When you find the map for Navajo County, click on the checkbox or on the plan name to choose it. Next, click duplicate to make a copy for you to modify as you see fit. Be patient as it can take up to 15 to 20 seconds to open up the map. Here is how your copied plan will appear. To change the name of the plan, first check the box next to the plan name in the list, then click the edit option. Click on the plan title to change the name and to enter a description of your plan. In this window, enter your desired map name and description, then click submit. Use the overlays option to add streets and labels to the map. Background map is required to see streets and other features. It's recommended that you select background map, district lines where available, the two label options, landmarks, precinct lines, and city lines. If you want population numbers on the precincts and census blocks, also click on the labels option with the down arrow next to it. Choose which labels you want to see on the geographic units in the map. It's recommended to include at least total pop. With your overlays selected and label assigned, now you are ready to draw your map. When you have made your selections, click apply. Use the hand to move the screen around. Use the paintbrush to select precincts or blocks and the eraser to undo any assignments. Zoom in and out using the plus and minus buttons. Click on the appropriate circle to choose which districts to assign the next precinct or block you click. As you draw your map, details of the precinct or census block you click on will appear here. Click on district details to see running totals for the district as you create it. The district number is given at the top. Click statistics to view additional summaries. Shown here are population totals and variance percentages for each district. This icon in the shapes column indicates whether or not each district is contiguous. This icon indicates whether or not a portion of a district is embedded. The notes below offer further clarification. When you want to return to the map, click this button. Click the district selector, then click the circle in district one to enable that district for editing. Zoom to a precinct. In this case, West Forest Lake is shown. Click the block selection level. Click on a precinct and it will shatter. This means that the individual blocks that make up that precinct will appear. Their individual labels will display. Shown here are populations. Select the paint map tool, then click on a block. That block has been assigned to Supervisorial District 1 and its color has been changed accordingly. The block's population count will be added to District 1 and subtracted from District 2. Their population totals and deviations will automatically update. Edits can be undone by clicking on the undo arrow. Continue with your edits until you are satisfied with your plan. When your work is complete, click on the Maps button. Click on the checkbox next to the plan that you are ready to publish, then click on the Publish button. 
Here you can change your map name and its description. You can also add a Twitter handle. When you are satisfied with your entries, click publish. You must send an email to Melissa Buckley whose email address is shown here. The email must include the published plan's name in order for the redistricting committee to include it in their deliberations.